Sean Cast, what are you doing here? Hey, <laughs> I'm about to start a mural. And what's the mural going to consist of? It was going to be a, a majestic looking elk and in front of a Mount Baker and the Twin Sisters. A lot of color to it? Oh yeah, uh -huh. a lot of natural earth tones. How did you get started being doing signs like this, murals? Um, I've loved to do art my entire life and um, when I realized, when I saw people doing murals, I decided I, I wanted to paint my art really big instead of on small on paper. So I started seeing stuff come up and popping up on walls. I said, I want to do that. And I've seen a lot of your murals around town. Oh yeah, yeah. You're everywhere here in Bellingham. Hey, I've, I've been doing it for about 20 years now here in Bellingham. Excellent. Well, thank you, Sean. Uh, my pleasure. Sean Cass is here. Sean, beautiful piece of work. Thank you, just getting started. So how did you get started doing art? Um, I've been drawing my whole life. I'm a lefty, so I'm right brain. So I'm a real, real visual thinker. Um, funny story, my mom told me before I could even speak words that uh, she gave me you know, some crayons and some piece of paper while she's preparing my dinner. I'm in the high chair and uh, So I'm scribbling, and then I started freaking out. Like, I want to get my mom's attention. She knows I'm trying to tell her something, but I don't have words yet. So she comes over, and she looks at what I'm drawing, and I'm pointing at the paper, and I'm pointing at the wall. And she looks over at the wall, and there's a spider going down on its, on its web. And then she looks down, and I drew a spider on the piece of paper. So I was communicating through drawings before I could even speak. So it's kind of the drawing my whole life. Once I figured out, once I figured out about murals, I wanted to paint big, and then when I figured out about spray paint, you know, it's so much faster than a paintbrush, and you can really draw rather than paint on a large scale, so I fell in love with it. And you did this in about three hours. Yeah, yeah, just the, the rough sketch. It'll take longer to get the whole thing done, because I really like to focus on details, so I'll spend a lot of time shading and and highlighting and uh, outlining everything. Did you go to art school? No, I never went to art school, but I took art classes all through high school and junior high, and uh, took a couple art classes in college, but never, never uh, got a degree in art. I thought about it, and I figured I already do so much art that well, I might as well not, you know, not just put my whole all my education into art, so I figured I might want to be a little more well-rounded and get a degree in something else. But environmental science, you know, I like to paint nature scenes, so. It blends perfectly with the trees over there, too. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Thank you, Sean. My pleasure. My pleasure. We're talking to Sean Cass about this beautiful mural that he's been working on. There's been a lot of work being done here. So it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of art. Tell us about it. Um, today is, I think, uh, maybe day four. Um, you know, we 
started out, we found a picture of an elk we liked, and then um, we found a, a, a picture of, with the background that um, one of the elk members, was it her, their daughter or their yeah. niece? Alan's daughter, yeah. Desi designed the background, so we uh, we took some of the, the background designs with the Mount Baker and the twin sisters and all the, the, tree, the tree leaves and stuff. Um, then I kind of just worked in some rolling hills and some tree line, and uh, yeah, so today we're gonna, we just got the black outline on the elk and we're about to start coloring in the, the antlers and putting some detail into all the fur and really making it start to pop. It looks really good. Thank you very much. I well, we look forward to seeing the finished product. Right, me too. Me too. <laughs> See, only an artist would think to use spray paint as a piece of, you know, something to work with. Yeah, right. I never would think of that. It's a Especially medium. Especially on the surface with this much texture, you know, it's... You made it look tough. good. You made it look really good. Yeah. Yeah, see, I like, I like how this is going. I'm going to add more shading to each individual leaf, but this dark green instead of the black, and then that black really pops out when you're on the elk. Yeah, once, all the, once I get some more of that dark green, that's, the trees are going to start looking good. I never thought of that. Huh. Does or else it doesn't spray right for you. Can it can it chemically hurt you? Can what? Can the paint hurt you chemically? No, I mean if you like spray it into your mouth and ingest it. That's not gonna that, we won't do that then. No. <laughs> Is it hard to buy spray paint these days? Um, right now, there's uh, supply chain issues. They're, they're running low. Because all the current political stuff. Going on. This stuff comes from Germany. I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. on a shelf for so long it gets really settled. Sometimes you're supposed to shake them for like five minutes. They have those little machines that shake them, don't they? I've seen those little machines. Yeah, at the paint store. Yeah. But when you go to the art store to buy this stuff, it's, yeah, who knows how long it's been sitting in a warehouse before you get it. Could you make a living doing this? Oh yeah. Who are some famous mural painters? Um, there's a ton of them. Uh, I don't know everyone, a lot of their names. But there's one guy from Germany named Dane. And he's done like 15 story high apartment buildings and stuff. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of muralists that use spray paint. There's a guy named Shepard, Shepard Ferry. And he, uh, he did a really big one in Seattle. He's really famous, and he did a really big one in Seattle. Right, if you are standing right in front of uh, Pike's Place Market and you're looking uphill, you'll see this huge mural he did. Wow. It's probably about five or six stories high. It's really, really popular in Europe and in a, all over the world. And it should be here. Yeah, yeah. Vegas, Vegas has been uh, putting up a whole lot of humongous murals too. Miami, Miami has been has a whole art district where they have the whole place is just filled with murals. Weird. Do kids ever come up to you and say, "I want to be a mural artist"? What do I do? If kids come up to me, uh, I always tell them wear a mask because you know they. Yes, 
frustrated when you spend like good money on a can. How much do they cost? About seven bucks. Six, seven, six fifty, seven bucks. You spend good money on a can, and you rely, you depend on it because you pick out the colors you need for the job, and then the can starts acting funky. It's giving you trouble. The artist's eye, huh? Well, I got it colored in with its base color. Start. Put this stupid can away now. I want to go ahead and put some attention to these hooves. Do you ever go to museums and look at the artwork? I haven't been to a museum in a long time because I don't I haven't really been out of town in a while. Uh-huh. But I do like museums. I went down to Santa Barbara to the Van Gogh exhibit. Oh, I bet that was they awesome. Yeah, Monet's, Matisse's, uh, they the ones that influenced him. Oh wow. And the funny thing about it that I really enjoyed was they said that <laughs> he based a lot of his art on books. Oh, specifically Dickens. I never would think of that. Charles Dickens? Yep. That looks good. Yeah, I'm going to add some grays to it to give it some highlights. Okay. You have to wonder whether there's a museum full of murals. Down, there... down in uh, Miami every year they do a big one. Really? It's full of graffiti art, yeah. I'm going to Florida next week. They act oh wow. They actually had, uh, had a big one in uh, Everett for a while. Here in Washington. I didn't know that. I huh. know a guy that has a, one of the biggest graffiti art collections in the world. And How do you collect graffiti art? He, uh, would, he just flies in graffiti artists, he, he finds out about them and flies them into Washington and then he has, uses big sheets of plywood and has them paint on them. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a good idea. I never thought of that. Yeah. And he, some of them are, some of the people that he knows are uh, some of the original graffiti artists from the early 80s that first started writing in New York and stuff. A couple of the people passed away by now and he has some of their original pieces. So, uh, it's pretty cool. Well, you see a lot of graffiti on subways yeah, back in the old not, days. We don't have any subways anywhere around here, though. And back, they had the trains. Oh, the trains are full of it. I, I used to paint trains when I was in high school. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. It was so much fun. Traveling art. You can get in a lot of trouble these days doing that, though. Oh. Traveling art, though. Oh, yeah. Everybody will see it. Well, you can go onto the uh, national, like, some sort of website to track down the serial number. You find the serial, you write down the serial number of the train that you painted on, and then you can go to some, you know, official 
I don't like website for the train system and it tells where all the train cars are at any given time in the world or in the country. That's like some people would draw on a dollar bill with their name or draw something on it and it goes all over all over the world. Oh yeah. Huh. You can actually keep track of where your artwork is at. Just look it up online. Do you take pictures of all your artwork and keep it for yourself? I don't really keep it in my portfolio. I don't have a camera. I don't even use cameras that much, so I kind of rely on other people to take pictures of my stuff. So I got a lot of stuff that I haven't kept good, good, uh, pictures of. Alright, so we're Boy, elks have some big hooves, don't they? Yeah, they do. Wow. Especially this guy. How big is the elk? Big? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, at least 10 feet. Yep. Yeah. I wonder if there's any elk actually this big in real life. Well, there's an elk preserved on the road on Highway 20. Yeah. If you go by there, they're everywhere down there. They even have a parking area where you park and then look out at them. Now, if one was this big, though, that would be a grandpa. It would probably be prehistoric times you probably had them that big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are cheaper cans. They're a little more hard to control. I never thought you had to have control over them. I thought they were just a, a nozzle, but I never thought of that. Yeah, it's all about how hard you press down. Yeah. You know, how fast you can move and how quickly you can spray it and let go of the trigger. Like a light touch or a heavy touch? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I never thought of that. So you're pushing the paint around with your finger too at times, huh? Oh yeah, I do that just to try to wipe it away while it's still wet. Or if it's going to drip, I try to make sure I wipe it before it drips. You remember your very first mural? Oh, yeah. What was it? A Dr. Seuss character. Which one? Um, it was a really obscure one. It was like a, it was like a dude in a turban. It was kind of interesting. It had a... You know, Dr. Seuss likes to do very worldly characters. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And uh, this was in like 1996, and it was just a face with a beard and a turban, and but it was a Dr. Seuss character, and I did it illegally right outside of the um, Boys and Girls Club on this just concrete wall, and it was in just blue and white, and it stayed there for years, and it, it looked really good. You know, I was always into doing cartoon characters more than doing words. So that was kind of, I knew some, I was watching these other older people. There was these older people that were doing it, they, and I was just admiring their stuff, and I finally decided I wanted to try it out. By older people, I mean these kids that are like a couple years older than me. Yeah. <laughs> but they were really, they were really, really good.
they had moved to Arkansas from San Francisco. And uh, so they were around the, the graffiti art culture. And they kind of brought it to our home, our little town in Arkansas. And that's when I got hooked. Little did they know what they what they caught, what they started, huh? Hell yeah, what they created. Created a monster. Nah, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. We all need, need a little art in our soul. It's true. A little color on the walls yeah. really does brighten up people's days. Well, at the post office where I worked at, there was a big machine we sorted letters on. And the wall for the machine was about this long. Uh -huh. And this lady painted on her off time a mural. The very beginning of the Postal Service, Pony Express, to trains, to airplanes, to the current uh, history like of the post office. Oh, that's cool. and I, I loved it. I, I look at it all the time. And she, the machines, I don't know where the machines are at now, but I really enjoy it. I got a picture of it. I like what you can do with airbrush too. Airbrush. Ooh, that'd be cool. I've, I've seen some really good airbrush murals here in town, like in, inside the bagelry. Uh huh. They did a big mural of like the process of making bagels and boiling them and, and, the, and uh, rolling them out and everything. And it's a really nice mural. The one downtown? Yeah, it's, it's inside the bagelry. I'll look. But nobody can go in there right not, now. Not right now, no. They're still required to wear a mask. Good oh, absolutely. They look strong to hold up a big animal. That's good. Yeah. I always thought of an elk as a noble animal. Definitely. Very noble. They're, you know, they're vegetarians. They're, they're huge beasts. They can, you know, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with.